Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I just watched this live and I'm going to completely slaughter his last name. I know this. Um, Joseph Giasalone. I don't even want to try it. I'm so sorry. Um, I've been subbed up for him for a while. He has some really good content. Please make sure you go over and like and like and subscribe. So he just had on a criminalist, David Fisher really jam-packed live with lots of great questions about forensics. Might seem like a nerdy subject, but I love it. So I did ask a couple of questions, the f and I'm just going to highlight my questions and what he answered, and then I'm going to put the link in the description below. So again, make sure you go over there and watch the whole thing. It's really, really good. Um, I was quite surprised by the answer to my second question. Wow. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to play it. A great question here from Crime Sleuthing. How common or rare is it to locate a single source of DNA on something? Uh, it depends on the nature of the sample. Um, you know, nowadays we have a lot of mixtures, especially with touch DNA and, and traces of DNA. Um, so something like a door handle is going to have, uh, multiple sources, something that's, you know, biological fluid, um, is more likely to be single source or, you know, if you find a drink container, uh, usually those are only drunk by a single person. Now you, you can have a mixture on a, a Coke bottle that is possible, but we would expect to usually find a single source on those types of samples. And then if it's an intimate source, um, you know, if it's a sexual assault sample, we would expect to find a mixture between the uh, victim's DNA and the, uh, the suspect's DNA. So here's, here's... All right. So that was my first question. Great answer. Really appreciate it. So then I thought, well, let me clarify a little more because you know I'm talking about Idaho 4. And he picked up on it right away as well. <laughs> so let's see what he says to my follow-up question. And I was pretty surprised. Really great answer. Here we go. So Crime Southern says, just to clarify on her question, says, in a case I'm following, the report says they found a single source of DNA on a sheath. I wonder if this happens to do anything with Idaho, but we don't know. Uh, so that is to be expected, basically, since it would be likely only been handled by the perpetrator. So uh, <clears throat> I'm assuming this is the uh, Brian Kohlberger case up there. They found the, uh, some of his DNA on the knife sheath where four students were murdered. Um, so I'm assuming that's where the single source of DNA question comes from. Yeah, so, you know, with DNA, we can only tell who the source of the DNA is belongs to we we can't really opine on how it got there so there is oh, such a thing as secondary and tertiary transfer so you know we get into all those types of questions a lot in court and the hypotheticals of you know if person a touch person b and then person b touch person c well person a's dna could end up on person c without them ever having come into contact with one another Okay. So those are all important things to consider uh, when testifying and report writing. Very interesting. Thank you, Joseph. Yep, you called it. I was trying to ask a specific question without calling out the case, but it's cool. <laughs> um, wow, right? As he said, person A can touch person B, and then person B touch person C, and transfer the DNA of person A to C without A ever touching C. So that's why they're not really supposed to opine on how it got there or when, only who it is. Very interesting indeed, right? Again, um, thank you for watching this. Please go over and watch the whole live. It's very, very good live. Highly recommend it, especially for all of us um, nerds that like this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.